Welcome to Detroit, home of the Square Pizza, Techno Music, Motown Records, and the Traffic Light. What is best known for, though, are cars. Ford, General Motors, and the automaker formerly known as Chrysler all called the Motor City home. By the early 20th century, Detroit was the third largest city in the nation, with almost two million residents. But those parabolic highs couldn't last forever. In 2021, just under 640,000 lived within the city limits. Detroit is a city with no shortage of heartaches, from the race riots of 1967 to 2013's record-setting $19 billion municipal bankruptcy. And the Lions, who've been bad since practically forever, Detroit's woes need no introduction. Some place the blame at the feet of politicians, like the mayor who oversaw that bankruptcy, Kwame Kilpatrick. Others blame billionaires like Quicken Loan CEO Dan Gilbert, or broken promises from the Illich family, which owns the Little Caesars pizza chain. Some in the Motor City have found an evergreen scapegoat, though. Linane Rouge, or the Red Dwarf. His story goes back to the city's founding in the late 1600s. But like a four-century-long game of telephone, depending on who you ask, you're going to get a different story. Are you pro or against the name? I don't know. It depends on the day. Do you think he's a harbinger of doom or a protector of the city? I think he's a troublemaker. All right. But some trouble can be fun. He's a protector. The name is a protector. No, he, 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 he brings doom. Doom, right? Yeah, it's yeah. It's a okay. curse. The name Rouge, if it's anything, aside from being a mythological folklore creature, uh, is a resident of Detroit that was here long before us and deserves to be here more than anyone else. To get some perspective, I reached out to Julie Kohler, a folklorist and professor at Michigan State University. Yeah, the more times the story gets told or redone or reimagined, I mean, that's just the folklore staying alive. So even if Hamlin invented it, it certainly wasn't like that's like the end of it. It's, it's grown, it's changed. People tell these stories, people write these stories, people make movies. Um, so it, it, you know, I don't think it's gonna go away anytime soon and in any way we can sort of keep it alive is, is worth it, but with context is always I think, useful. The name's origin goes back to Legends of Les Detroit, published in 1883, almost 200 years after Detroit's founding. It was written by folklorist Marie Carolyn Watson Hamlin. Among tales of werewolves and a flying canoe resides a legend about the Motor City's origins. The star? You might know his name from GM's luxury car division. Antoine de la Moth Cadillac, or for our purposes, Cadillac, a French soldier and trader who founded the city in 1701. Legend has it that one night at a dinner party in Quebec, Cadillac and fellow wealthy friends were visited by a fortune teller with a, quote, dark, swarthy complexion and a black cat on her left shoulder. When it came time for Cadillac's palm reading, she issued a premonition for telling of Cadillac founding a great city and having numerous offspring. When Cadillac pressed for more information, the crone warned him, warned him that selling alcohol to the natives would be his downfall, that Detroit would be the site of strife and bloodshed, that the natives would be, quote, treacherous, and that the English would struggle to run the colony. If there was an upside, it's that under a different flag, Detroit would become prosperous beyond Cadillac's wildest dreams. Cadillac was focused on his legacy and pressed the palm reader for details. Your future and theirs lie in your own hands, she said. Beware of undue ambition. It will mar all your plans. Appease the name Rouge. Beware of offending him. Should you be thus unfortunate, not a vestige of your inheritance will be given to your heirs. Your name will be scarcely known in the city you founded. Six years later, Cadillac and his wife were out for an evening stroll near the current Detroit Windsor Tunnel when the name appeared in their path. Watson Hamlin describes him as, quote, uncouth and being very red in the face with bright glistening eyes that bewilder anyone unfortunate enough to be caught in their gaze and that it had a grin made of sharp, pointed teeth. They come to Detroit, everything's great, and then um, I'll 
walking the shores of the river, they do encounter a little red man or something like that. Um, and he says something like, get out of my way. Like and his wife is standing right next to him going, remember, remember, she said that we can't scorn him. Rather than leaving it alone, Cadillac struck the imp with his cane and told it to get out of his way. The Nain's laughter pierced the night air before the imp vanished. Cadillac's wife reminded him of the crone's warning and that misfortune would soon be visited upon their family. Shortly thereafter, Cadillac was arrested in Montreal and had to sell his stake in Detroit to finance his defense. He died in France with his children never seeing a penny of his fortunes. Watson Hamlin writes that Detroit's flag changed five times in the ensuing century before reaching prosperity under the Republic. She writes that the Nain's appearance was a warning of impending evil or loss, like in the 1763 Battle of Bloody Run, where he was seen running along the Detroit riverbanks. Or when he was seen darting through the burning buildings in the 1805 fire that nearly destroyed the city. He was also spotted during the War of 1812 when Detroit was surrendered to the British. It becomes very much, if you look at sort of examples in that period, we had that one story from her and then we had the shorter stories from Skinner. Um, but if you start to look at other references into the 20th century, and it really starts to pop up more as you get into like the mid 20th century, um, it's very much associated with big disasters. So not like the little things that Skinner was talking about, of how gets sick or something, but the Great Fire um, in that period. We also have references to specific battles that go don't go the way of Detroiters. Um, it gets associated with the Great Ice Storm in the 70s. So these sort of like big, momentous, disastrous moments. Now those are affiliated with Lunan, which is supposed to sort of the, the mischievous bit. There have been countless tragedies since, but even before Photoshop and everyone had a smartphone in their pocket, Nain sightings were few and far between. People claimed to have seen him ahead of the 1967 race riots, and most recently, ahead of the 1976 ice storm that left 120,000 without power. They saw like a little creature climbing up a telephone pole, and they thought it was a child, and they were going to try to go up and save the child, and then it was like it disappeared, and then the ice storm came. I remember hearing that story as a kid. Like I remember like cousins telling me that story. So in that way, like I guess that's how I first encountered. I don't think I remember it being the Golden on Rouge, but I remember that story of this like creepy little creature that climbed up a telephone pole and then disappeared, and then there was a bad thing that happened. While the crone's warning about impending strife came to pass, her proclamation that no one would know Cadillac's name didn't quite pan out. Beyond GM's luxury vehicles, his name is all over downtown Detroit. Hotels, apartment buildings, liquor stores, you name it, he, he's everywhere. But what about the name? What's the name been up to these past 40 years? Well, he's been in the media mostly. The Red Dwarf starred alongside Eminem's brother in 2020's Devil's Night, Dawn of the Nain Rouge, and even granted an interview with the local ABC affiliate back in 2013. I think having a folk, sort of folk hero, folk icon has been useful to Detroit, certainly in the, you know, into the, the 21st century, you know, you see a lot of fun stuff associated with the Lamon Rouge, and I think, um, I think it's fun. <laughs> Like, it's fun to have some folklore that you can talk about and scary stories you can share with kids. And I think as people have kind of thought it's cool to be, you know, learning about Detroit history, that that's one thing that's kind of a funky thing you would maybe have heard of in your history books. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that's part of what's fun about it and what's maybe why it's sort of popular. Um, it's just like a, a fun aspect, the same way that probably the Mothman or whatever is is popular in Ohio. You can find his face on absinthe and other spirits around the city, too. He's also been present for the annual March to Nain Rouge, a street party slash parade in early March where Detroiters take up costumes and brass instruments in an effort to drive the little red man out of the city once again. The Mardi Gras style street parade started in 2010. This year, the parade returned after a two year absence and Detroit was ready to party. It was where I encountered protester John Tenney, 
run stopnainshane.com. Do you think the Nain is a protector of the city or a harbinger of destruction? I think it's a, uh, well, I mean, I think a harbinger is someone who warns you of upcoming dangers. Okay. And if the Nain is anything like, uh, before the Europeans got here, if it's anything like Nanabozo, like a protecting Native American spirit, which showed itself as a little red rabbit to the, the Zenizens of proto Detroit, uh, then it warns us of upcoming dangers, and we should take that into our, we should be celebrating that we had a protector, not trying to chase it out of the city. Tenney says that the Nain is an allegory for the Native Americans who resided here before Cadillac. Driving out the Nain, a little red man, symbolically equates to driving out the Natives. Throughout Watson Hamlin's source material, Native Americans are written as names. That the name appears on alcohol labels, given Cadillac's warning about trading brandy with the quote, savages, feels particularly tone deaf. Detroit's contemporary struggles are more political and social than they are militaristic. So now, instead of blaming the name for battles going south, he's a scapegoat for destroying sports dynasties. Rather than drive the name out, Tenney says we should celebrate having an ancient protector, something that goes back to the fortune teller's warning. Appease the name. Don't offend him. At the penultimate parade in 2019, the organizers took that track and embraced the name. We all know what happened the next year, though, and why that and the 2021 events were postponed. But confirmation bias is a hell of a drug, and organizers decided blaming the name again was the best course of action this year. At the parade's close, the Nain's scapegoat status was cemented. On the steps of the Detroit Masonic Temple, a stand-in for the Nain, clad in a ridiculous, full-body, red spandex suit, took on everyone's aspersions, much to the delight of the crowd. It just feels constructed. I mean, and again, me with authenticity, like everything is authentic, but um, yeah, I feel like it's, it's not totally understanding the meaning and the history of Moulin Rouge, and then it, yeah, it's just a chance to have another Detroit Mardi Gras, which we already have a few of that I know. <laughs> but should Detroiters be afraid if they ever encounter the name? If he's a harbinger of doom, then I guess you should be like paying attention <laughs> what's coming, right? <laughs> um, but if you think about like the Cadillac story, and we still see some stories of that of people who are like unkind to him, then it's just maybe you should just be, just be polite. <laughs> yeah, that he's so heavily associated with battles in early writing. Um, clearly, you know, we don't have any like battling with other nations happening in the last uh, few hundred years. So that, that that's like sort of the early thing that we're blaming him for. And then it, it sort of morphs um, as you move into other problems. Uh, I think that's a big thing that changes it. And then um, probably in our modern day, we don't take it too seriously either, right? It's funny and fun and something to sort of use as you will, whether you're blaming him for things or otherwise. Um, I think it's, he's been applied to whatever, he's whatever you need him to be. The name didn't warn us about COVID or cause it. He didn't make Detroit one of the world's hardest hit cities either. Same goes for white flight and the conditions that caused countless white people to flee for the suburbs or that $19 billion bankruptcy, or the Lions' decades of constant disappointment. Instead, the name became an unwitting scapegoat for whatever tragedies arise in the Motor City. No one likes admitting they're wrong, but given the ugly implications of the legend, we should look in the mirror more often than not when it comes time to point fingers. Reporting from Detroit for Unexplained Cases, I'm Timothy J. Seppelon.